It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are ready. Lots to talk about. The new Surfire here. The new Surfire here. Paul says, eh, not that interesting. We'll talk about the big nuance acquisition. Microsoft's second biggest acquisition of all time. Holy moly. And <laughs> the biggest Patch Tuesday of the year. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 720. Recorded Wednesday, April 14th, 2021. Flock blockers. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Melissa. Like expired milk, 30% of your customers' data goes bad every year. And that's money down the drain. Visit Melissa's developer portal for free access to data quality APIs, demos, and code samples. Freshen up your sour data today with 1,000 records clean for free at melissa.com. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Windows World, Microsoft and environs paul therott is here therott.com mary Jo foley from all about microsoft.com thanks to uh, micah who filled in did you guys give him a hard time did you tease him did, was he good no him? he's too nice to tease he's he a good. nice guy i know he was really good as always uh, yeah, he's great. <laughs> really yeah. fun uh well thank you micah for filling in for me last week you may mike is on call this week too because i just got my second oh, yes. shot he's going to be needed I tomorrow <laughs> I would, yeah. I'm off tomorrow. That's why I did it. I thought, you know what? I'm yeah. I'm took a chance that I wouldn't get side effects until later in the day, right? Because I got it two took hours me ago. like I think I said 20, 20 hours almost. Okay, because I have Thursday and Friday off, so oh, I thought that'll mm. be perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you'll be set. Just uh, you're not going to be doing anything tomorrow night. Yeah, <laughs> just get you know. Okay, that's yeah. good Keep sleeping, know. Lisa. I'm not doing just anything tomorrow night. Unless yeah, you want to sleep. Drink a lot of water. If you want to nap with me. Drink a lot of water. Oh, oh really? Yeah, Is that that's, the other that's, yeah. that's probably a really good right. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go fill my Contigo. But yes. first, let's talk about nuance. I know. I, wow. My analogy here, and I've said it three times now, folks, so I apologize if you listen to all our shows. Mm -hmm. It's like a little fish swimming along, then a bigger fish comes, <laughs> eats it, and then a bigger fish comes, <laughs> eats it, and then a bigger, yep. <laughs> and then finally Microsoft fish comes along and goes, I'll take it all. Because yep. Nuance yep. really was as much as anything an acquisition company, right? Yeah, they, yeah. They're twenty they, years old. <laughs> yeah, but they bought Dragon. They brought every text, every speech to text product out there. Who bought Learn yeah, Out and How Speak? Because that was Microsoft's. I know. Somebody just asked me that. I'm like, I, I I'll don't look know about that. Yeah, because yeah. that was the one. That was like the only other one. Yeah. Now, of course, well, there's many, uh, and that's what was the I, IBM had one back in the day. What was the IBM one? <laughs> Um, it was great back then. It I mean, was. That was the ago. third one. And I do believe... Oh, boy. Why can't I remember this? Oh, Learnout and House Speed went bankrupt in 2001 because oh, of... Oh, they did? They, oh. Because of fraud, the fraud of Learnout and House Speed, the founders. Oh, wow. <laughs> Joe and Paul. Uh, hey. Wow. Okay. Never mind. I thought that was the one <laughs> Microsoft was using for some reason. Well, Microsoft, no, Microsoft had something called Tell, Tell Me. Tell Me. Yeah, right. that, that That's much yeah. later. That's much later. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was, yeah. I mean. So Learnout so and House uh, bought Berkeley ago, Speech right. Technologies. Then they bought Global Link. I'm surprised Nuance didn't buy them. I know. Right. If you look on Wikipedia at Nuance. Oh, Nuance did buy them. <laughs> They did? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there's so many companies they bought. It's unbelievable. <laughs> they were originally ScanSoft, right? So so the first oh, thing they, they did okay. is they okay. bought up all the scanner software out there. Uh, okay. Then when they yeah. bought everything and and completely flattened the landscape, they decided what's next? Oh, speech to text. And yes, they got learn out in house be after the fraud and they went in bankruptcy. So they got a they got a deal. Oh, right. And Learn, Learn Out and Houseby had bought Dragon Systems, so that's right. how Nuance the, got Dragon. Naturally right? speaking, <laughs> thing that I sort of remembered. Yeah. Do you yeah. Remember, so wait, um, IBM's thing might have been called Via Voice. Yes, it was. Oh, your memory! Oh. Wow. And then, holy cow, you must have Impressive. already had your second shot because you're <laughs> here's, you're good. Here's why I know this. This is this is a true story. When I still lived in Boston, I walked into a Dunkin' Donuts and I had a jacket on with a Windows logo. This guy came over to, guy saw me and said, hey, come here. 
It's like an older guy. He goes, you work at Microsoft? I'm like, no, I, no. And he says, good, <laughs> because their, their voice recognition software is garbage. Yeah. And the stuff that IBM has is great. Via voice. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, you right. had no idea what he was talking about. All right, get ready for this. Yeah. Nuance was incorporated in 1992 as Visioneer. Remember the Visioneer scanner? Oh. No. It was a little document, paper document scanner. They yeah. acquired ScanSoft. Meanwhile, Scansoft. in 74, Ray Kurzweil founded yeah. Kurzweil Computers. It was the first OCR system. Mm -hmm. He sold his company to Xerox. Wait, what, what years are we talking now? Okay, We're Kurzweil's in 74. In 80, wow. he sold it to Xerox. The company okay. became known as Xerox Imaging Systems and later <laughs> ScanSoft. ScanSoft. Visioneer really acquired ScanSoft. <laughs> remember the paper wow. port? Visioneer paper port scanner? Come on, you got to remember that. I, I think this is like something that was advertised in Byte Magazine. Like Absolutely. <laughs> We're talking 1999. I mean, nice. Yeah. Yep. yep. Nice. Yep. So they got so then they uh, they uh, Visioneer acquired ScanSoft. <laughs> they renamed themselves ScanSoft. They they had TextBridge Paperport OmniPage. You must remember OmniPage. No, I do remember yep, OmniPage. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Two thousand one, they acquired LearnOut and Housebee, which had acquired, as you remembered, just before that Dragon Naturally Speaking. Yeah. And then they went yep. bankrupt, and then they got bought. <laughs> They worked mm. with, uh, you may remember, they worked with Apple to create the first mm -hmm. intelligence in Siri. Yep. Uh, Scansoft. Mm. Um, oh, my God. That's just the number of companies. The number no, of companies they bought. Look at this crazy. list. The <laughs> most <laughs> incestuous uh, tech, you know, tech, mar tech market there is. But I think their business was really I uh, aggregating IP. So Nuance yeah. bought Dictaphone. Yeah. Mobile Voice Control, Focus, Blue Star, Be Vocal, Voice Signal, <laughs> TGIX, Commissure, Vodacoda, Vocoda, Viacor, Escription, Multivision, Philips Speech Recognition, Snap In <laughs> Software, IBM Speech Technology Rights in 2009. So that's when they got Viacor. Well, that, that must have been where Via Voice went. Yep. It went into mm -hmm. Dragon, naturally speaking. Is yep. that, you're saying this is all from. Um, what became oh, Dragon at the time. Yeah. Uh, the speech technology department of Harmon. <laughs> well, <laughs> Didn't even, of you know, who knew, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jot Networks, remember them? Encore, N E Copy, Spinvox, Max Speech, they buy, bought them. This is turning into a family guy gag where it just keeps going and going. You, you know, know. You know uh, yeah. Justin Salvato might want to do something with this. Uh, <laughs> per se, a voice biometrics based authentication company, Notarize, iPad software, Equitrack, we're now in 2011, SVOX for, for cars, WebMedX, <sighs> Loquendo, S Swipe, remember the Swipe keyboard? Nuance. Yeah. He wants to do that. Okay. Wants. That's, that's cool. Vlingo or V-Lingo, probably. V -lingo. Wait, wait, hold on a second. You're saying, wait, you, you just said Nuance did the swipe keyboard. They acquired but, swipe in 2011. But did Microsoft acquired, didn't Microsoft acquire swipe? I know. I oh, thought they, they did. They, maybe they, maybe the yeah. Nuance sold them back. I don't know. Yeah. I By the way, I ain't done. Oh, <laughs> uh, where did we stop V-Lingo, then Transcend Services? which was um, medical language specialists. Actually, that's where Dragon really excels is in, uh, in radiology right. and other you, medical. It's funny. You look starting, yeah, starting towards this period is when they start buying all the healthcare right. systems. Safecom, yep. Ditech, Quantum, yep. Quadmed, J.A. J. J. Thomas and Associated, that's also a physician associated, mm -hmm. uh, Accentus, Virtuoz, CopyTrack, Tweddle Connect, <laughs> <laughs> Cognition Technologies, Varola E, formerly Par 3 Communications. Why would you change your name from Par 3 to Varola E? Two eyes. Right. Uh, Accelerad, secret makers of See My Radiology, a cloud based medical images and reports exchange. Touch Commerce, Montage, Montage Health Care Systems, M Carbon, iScribes, Voicebox, and Sykara. <laughs> That, so Microsoft never owns Swipe, by the way. They I thought they bought them. You're right. I thought so. Too. They just duplicated it. I, I, yeah, I think so. And um, that software disappeared from the face of the earth about three years ago. Yeah, because because you know why? It was into the giant maw of nuance. Yeah. 
which <laughs> right. I have to say right. is not in my opinion. Well, I assume like swipe capabilities have just been added to everything. Yeah, yeah everything right, does. So. It. That's why yeah. they, they killed swipe. But yeah. Nuance has not been a good uh, a steward of a dragon. Steward. <laughs> yeah, dragon exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at that. Sure. They, they, they really were an yeah, acquisition yeah. company, I think. Yeah. So how yeah. much did uh, Micro... So the big fish bought them and gets all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the biggest... The whale just be, <laughs> ate the fish. Yep. No, uh, and as somebody said to me yesterday, think about all the patents they got when they bought them. <laughs> yeah. They got all those companies, yeah. all the IP. By the way, it was not Swipe. It was Swift Key that Microsoft bought. Oh, right. Uh, Trex right. in the chat room is telling me. That's yeah, right. I, I remember that. Swift yeah. Key, thank you. Which also did yeah, the swiping yeah. thing, but, you know. Yes, right, right. right. Holy <laughs> cow, that's crazy. I know. They bought a lot of, they bought a lot of stuff. And now Microsoft owns all that stuff. All <laughs> right. How much? Nineteen point seven billion, which is Microsoft's second biggest acquisition ever after LinkedIn. Wow! Right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's big. It's big. Yeah, they were. It's funny because over the weekend, Bloomberg broke that they might buy them for sixteen billion, and everyone was like, "Oh my goodness, sixteen billion! Can't that's be. so much money!" So much. <laughs> too much. Nineteen point seven. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I think that was literally. Uh, it was. 60, it was really 16, but that includes like their debt or something. Like they literally, this is an they all bought cash the debt. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. 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 Interesting. I know. Yeah. So for me, the most interesting thing was hearing, as usual, hearing Microsoft explain why they bought them, right? Because mm -hmm. we, we're talking about all the IP that they got and- a lot of people are saying, yeah, but Microsoft, they already had a lot of speech recognition technology themselves. Like, why did they go pay $19 billion to get more? But if, if you look at what Nuance has been doing over the past several years, they've been kind of honing their business to become a healthcare company as much as anything, right? So when the, Satya Nadella talked about them on the, on the investor call, the first thing he said was, this is about healthcare. Like, he didn't say it's about speech, or voice. Right, right. Right. <laughs> Which is a hoot since, I mean, what else would you buy it for? Sure. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really interesting on the weekend when I started looking into Nuance. You know, when you go to a company's website and you're reading all the drop downs and you're like, what do these people what do? What is this? Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, now we know they buy things. Yeah. I know, because I kept looking right. at their site, like it said products, and I clicked on products. I'm like, it's okay, like just a page. I still don't know what synergy. they do. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was like that, it, and everything was about. It, 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 in some ways, it mirrors the new Microsoft, right? A lot of stuff yeah. about all the all the social good kinds of stuff they're doing. Um, there was a lot about you know equity and this and that, and I'm not downplaying those things, but I'm like, okay, this is how these two companies fit together. They they have a lot of the same interests yeah. and That's way of operating right Same now. Same level of nonsense, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but but I think the, the main thing they want out of this, at least this is what they're saying, and I, I don't have reason to disbelieve them, is the healthcare focus because oh, yeah, right now huge. Microsoft focuses yeah. on like, you know, 10 or 12 verticals and the biggest one by far for them is healthcare. Um, oh, and the so biggest Microsoft's potential been in too, and out. right? Yeah, right. Yeah, Microsoft's been yeah. in and out of healthcare for like a decade. They bought a ton of healthcare companies. Then they sold them. Then they kind of refocused on healthcare.next. So if you look at this, it's, they get the IP for the speech technology and the AI technology that Nuance has. Plus they get all this vertical expertise in healthcare, which is something they really they want. They also sell a COVID-19 chat bot. Yeah. So does Microsoft, I think, right? <laughs> so you put that on your website so you don't have to answer the same questions yeah. over and over and over right. and over and over. You know, when we talk about conversational AI and chatbots. Oh, yeah. Like Tay. That, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's what they do, too. So, yeah. Interesting. It really of, fits well with Microsoft, I think. Yeah. It does. It Is, does. Are any of their uh, bots uh, foul-mouthed? Because I, I kind of miss that. <laughs> yeah, like Tay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, probably not. Um, you know, the <laughs> Microsoft Tay, the insult bot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think it's very interesting to see. Well, uh, so here's, here's nuances business. Two thirds is healthcare. One third is enterprise. So, I mean, it couldn't really map better to Microsoft, right? The enterprise right. stuff is all these other verticals that Microsoft also has, you know, telco and retail and, um, finance, all the same ones. Right. Um, 
Scott Guthrie gets on the investor call and he says, by the way, this DAX thing that they have, the ambient technology where it takes, it records voice and then it does AI magic on it and it turns it into notes that can be applied to every industry. So it's, then you're like, uh-huh. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. They, they're going to use it for healthcare, but then they're going to use it for everything else too. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very natural fit. Everybody's like, do you think it was worth 19 billion? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a finance whiz. I, I don't know if it was worth 19 billion or who else was looking at the company. Maybe Google, maybe well, Amazon. I think Apple too, apparently at yeah. least really? at one point. Oh, interesting. And you, you know, Apple, a company like Apple would have done something completely different with this company. Obviously. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I have to think that Nuance was maybe had put together a pretty nice portfolio, but wasn't necessarily doing that well, given that they don't have a lock on that market. Uh, mm-hmm. I know they right. weren't profitable. I, I'm looking, the only financials I could see are from 2016, but they lost money in 2016. A lot of revenue. Well, I mean, now that Dragon isn't selling it but on Best Buy shelves anymore, it's just gone downhill. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, everybody, the problem is everybody has... Uh, yeah. No, and they're still selling it. it. Yeah, they're oh yeah, no, a lot of people too. buy it, but, yeah. but it's mostly yeah. specialized, uh, like lawyers right. and doctors. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I think if this you is go perfect to their website, for Microsoft. Got it. Um, Me too. The, the, Me too. The, the healthcare stuff is is all for you know Apple would be out in front with healthcare on the watch and all that kind of stuff. Microsoft is behind yeah. the scenes. It's all about the back end yeah. services, and yeah. Microsoft is the type of company who would partner with all of the relevant players in the healthcare market. Um, mm-hmm. uh, this is the type of thing that makes sense for them. I mean, yeah. uh, in ways that I just don't think it would have made sense for almost any other company. Yeah. 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 <laughs> of course, two hours after the acquisition, shareholder lawsuit. Uh, really? Oh, really? Well, really? Uh, investigation of the sale of nuance and I mean, it encourages I investors to overpriced. contact the firm. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> well, you know, they're saying maybe, yeah, it seems like that was a pretty good deal. I think but, it was a 30%, <clears throat> wasn't it? 30% over the ending stock price yeah. on Friday. Exactly. What they're investigating yeah. is, can we, can we take a the other law, lawsuit here? What do you think? How many people want to join in? Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of those people are going to say, you know, I'm, I'm actually kind of looking for the check, uh, but thanks. Yeah. Yeah, you know, or the Microsoft <laughs> shares or whatever they. Well, no, I guess it's cash. The company is the company being dissolved or is it being run independently? How does this work? No, CEO so sticking my, around, right? Yeah, it's yeah, very it interesting. You know, when employee, they, right? yeah, but when they bought, remember when they bought GitHub and they bought LinkedIn, they made a big deal out of we're going to run them independently. Like they're they're going to be like a separate company and we're going to let them run their own business. They didn't say that about nuance at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, okay. not even, even when they say that, I never believe it. So they lost yeah. money in 2016, <laughs> 2017, and 2018, but they made money last year and mm. the year before. Yeah. So they've they, been selling off a lot of their assets oh, that are not directly why. in the markets they want to be in mm-hmm. right now. So they've been selling off big chunks of their business. You well, know? they convinced Microsoft that there's a yeah future. I think they were setting themselves up to be acquired, sure. frankly. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's I set myself up to be acquired by pouring myself I did a the same strong thing. Yeah, drink. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be a really low price, guys. Just saying, if you want to put me out of commission, I, I don't have to keep going as an independent. I'm anyway. I'm just to, yeah. No, you know. Uh, so the last number I, I was looking for how many employees do they have? The last number I could find was six six thousand five hundred. So that's yeah. a lot of new Microsoft employees wow. to be added. Well, yeah. if they <laughs> and that's probably what that means when they they don't say we're not gonna we're not gonna touch a thing. Right. Mm. Oh, we're going to touch a thing. We're going to touch that's all That's the of first them. thing we're going to touch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do you know uh, where, where were they primarily located or were they spread out? I thought know, they were back uh, east. Burlington, Burlington, Mass. Oh, Mass. Okay. Burlington, <laughs> the, the other tech hotbed that no one's talking <laughs> about. Is that where Burlington it's Coat next, Factory's from? Yeah, I was going to say, it's next It's next to the Coat Factory. I always exactly. thought that was from Vermont for some reason, but it could be. But uh, but anyway, yeah, hopefully it is next yep. to the men's, uh, the factory warehouse or whatever. Burlington, Mass. Yeah, no, I, I seem to remember them having a kind of uh, like your, your, your cousin from Boston. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah i don't know i i was just kind of I, I know microsoft has a ton of cash right now like multiple billions of dollars that they want to spend on something and there's been all these rumors pinterest you know tiktok this that but i'm like okay this one you can just see like how this fits with microsoft right it's not you don't have to do a lot of fancy footwork to explain right 
where this yeah. fits. So. And you actually, you said, you said a, a, a important point, which is they've got cash. You got to yeah. do something with that. You can't just, you know, right. let it sit there. They're sitting on a it's lot in a, of cash. It's in a passbook <laughs> savings account. They got a little book. <laughs> Yeah, they write exactly. the transaction in. Actually, when Microsoft no. first started, I remember reading this. Uh, Bill Gates was putting the immense profits into savings accounts, and he had hundreds of bank books. <laughs> oh wow! When they hired their first CFO, wow! Um, and the guy said, "Okay, we're going to do something about that." But they were just buying certificates of deposit left and right. They didn't know what to do with the That's money. Funny. Wow. But a modern company, you know, I mean, Apple with no, its cash buys back that. stock, which, you know. Yeah, Microsoft right. does that too. Yeah, they bought, the they bought back price. a lot of stock. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I saw some people worried on Twitter. They're like, oh, no, that now they can't buy Discord. I'm like, guys, they still have oh, plenty guys. of money left I know. to buy Discord. I love, I love this mentality. It's like, <laughs> it, this is the same mentality. It's like, you know, Microsoft makes a change somewhere in Windows. Like, what are they going to do? This other thing in Windows. It's but like, why guys, are people yeah. 130,000 employees here to buy Discord? Yeah. Why? Uh, that's an interesting. They well, really want them to buy Discord. Wonder why? Um, well, that's that's another one that I feel like is a pretty good fit for oh, Microsoft yeah. in a lot of ways. I do too. Right? Yeah, because they need one more video <laughs> text <It's> like messaging <laughs> platform. That's right. No, but I mean, right. with the gaming side of the company, it's a pretty easy to sell situation, right? I, I think yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it. I think it has big impact beyond that too, right? Oh, I mean, that's yeah, big with the sure. Youngs. It's yeah. really, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, uh, this is where Microsoft struggles. They're old small. Exactly. Yeah. They want young people. Yeah. 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 So it's a good way to get a, a, a name recognition with young people. By the way, the chat room tells me mm -hmm. the Burlington Coat Factory is from Burlington, New Jersey. Um, <laughs> is it really? Yeah. That is. There must be Burlington oh, in every that state. Is, that's it horrific. Is. Mr. Burlington yeah. I got assumed around. they were from New England for some reason. I know, but, me um, too. Yeah. That is awful. Okay. Although well, your whatever. coat's probably not from New Jersey, I'm guessing it's from China, but yeah, the factory you. itself <laughs> is not in Burlington. Well, it probably was originally. Sure. Right? I mean, sure. You know, my uh, ancestors, uh, in fact, my great 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 grandfather was a hat rack manufacturer. Oh, wow. That's very, great. very well known uh, hat That's rack. Great. Hat rack company uh, burnt twice. It was right on the. So a haberdashery right the, is a uh, a hat store, right? What do you call a hat rack yeah. store? A haberackery? I don't know. A <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's, yeah. That should be what you. I call think it. they made them. I don't know if they had you know storefronts to sell hat right. racks. <laughs> hat rack. Get your hat rack. I'm going out to the hat rack store, honey. I'll be back later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, you just bought a hat rack. What are you doing? It's famous family lore because it burnt down twice the hat rack factory. Oh. So anyway. Hat racks were made of wood? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They burn like yeah. hell. And this was back, you sure. know, this was 150 <laughs> years ago. I'm sure it wasn't. Yeah, That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nuance does yeah. not make hat racks. Because <laughs> so one well, thing. Actually, you know what? Guys, keep going. They might. They might. <laughs> they they might have bought a hat rack company at some <laughs> point. <laughs> Hat rack oh as a service. God. Exactly. Has. <laughs> you don't need a hat in the summer. We, we bring it in for the winter and then we take it away when it's over. It's right next to the Burlington Hat Rack Factory. Uh, um, all right. Well, there you go. You just learn yeah. more about nuance than you, you ever care about. And, and actually, you ever geez, wanted to I, know. Uh, let me yeah. take a little break because really the, the we buried the big story, which is there is a new surface in town and I'm dying to know more <laughs> about it. So I don't actually don't think that is the big story, but we'll get to that. I don't either. Oh, but we, we can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. New camera, new headsets, yeah, those, new speakers. The peripherals and, are pretty cool. Mm. Mm. But there maybe Paul's going to throw some water on your enthusiasm. A wrench in there. A wrench in the monkey. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Melissa. Did you know, did you know that like a carton of milk in your fridge, uh, your, your customer data has an expiration date? <laughs> yes. There's a Best Buy date on it. It turns out up to 30% of customer data goes bad every year. And if you think about it, it's not surprising. People move. They change Phone numbers, they change email addresses. All of those things that you use to stay in touch with your customer base change over time. And all you have to do is compound that year after year. And pretty soon, that, that, that customer list is useless. Unless you use Melissa. They have gotten 
so good at val validating everything. Address, email, very important these days, phone numbers, names. You know, when customer service reps enter in that information or even your customer enters in that information, they often transpose address numbers, maybe get, spell their name wrong, things like that. And that can really mess up your all of your customer contacts. Over 10,000 businesses trust the address experts. Melissa will validate existing customer data. It'll actually help you find new customers. And, and mostly, though, you're going to save time and money not trying to contact customers at old numbers, old emails, old addresses. Get accurate data in, and, and add to that data. Get to know your customers better. Melissa's Global Address Verification Service verifies addresses for over 240 countries and territories worldwide. They also can de-dupe, which is important. You don't, you know, I used to get like, I, I mentioned this before, Restoration Hardware Catalog is a beautiful catalog. It's a, you know, four color, glossy paper, and it's about three inches thick. I used to get three or four of them to the same name and address. I, I can't imagine the cost to mail those out, for, it's crazy for Restoration Hardware. They needed Melissa. Mail one catalog, you know? Don't harass your... You're making enemies with your customer. You're wasting trees. You're wasting money. Melissa can fix this. Increase the accuracy of your database and, of course, reduce postage and mailing costs. But now I mentioned you can also add... There's Melissa will also link up your customer demographic information with other publicly available information like social media, uh, marital status, property data. So you can really create a customer profile with Melissa. And you can do it any way you want. You can deploy Melissa on-prem, of course, but also as a web service. They have a secure FTP processing capability, so you can upload it, secure your contact list uh, securely. We actually did this for our Christmas list. And then download it when it's processed, which takes seconds because they're so fast. There's even a SaaS delivery. And, of course, they have an API. A lot of companies build Melissa into their customer service center so that as data is being entered, it pre-populates it, which is really nice, and make sure it's all correct. And don't worry, your customer data is absolutely private and secure. Melissa continually undergoes independent security audits to reinforce their commitment to data security, privacy, and compliance. SOC 2 HIPAA GDPR compliant. Right now, Melissa is supporting communities and qualifying essential workers during COVID-19. Your organization may qualify for six months of free service. Don't put up with sour customer data. Try Melissa's APIs in their developer portal. It's easy to log on, sign up, and start playing in the API sandbox anytime. In fact, it's so easy. You can get started and clean 1,000 records absolutely free just to see how it works. Melissa.com slash twit. Thank you, Melissa, for supporting Windows Weekly. Thank you, dear Windows Weekly listener, for using that address so they know you saw it here or heard it here. Melissa.com slash twit. Paul Therott says... Who cares that there's new surfaces? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I, I don't. Literally, not, not what I said. Literally, you said <sighs> it's not the. This, it, I, you didn't bury the lead. It shouldn't be the lead. I guess yeah, we kind of right. knew this was coming for one thing. Yeah. Right. Yes. Did. Yeah. It's, this has been leaking uh, for weeks, for sure. So. Yeah. yeah. So there's strike one. Uh, it's no, a Surface I mean, Laptop 4. Yeah. I'm I'm excited. Right. It's got AMD in it. That's cool. Yeah. AMD 4000 series. Um, okay. Right. Now that five, Ryzen 5000 is already shipping on competing devices, including a bunch of Dells that were just on laptops? the same day. On laptops, yep. really? Uh, yeah, 5000 mobile series. Yep. Oh, well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wait, but uh, at least we got time. Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4. Oh, wait. No, we don't. <sighs> and um, <laughs> I don't know. I know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I have a was there anything this, to you that was surprising and in the laptop part of it? No. No. I no. mean, there were things, there are <laughs> things that are new, right? It has Dolby yeah. Atmos speakers yeah. now. Um, period. I guess that's the end of the sentence. No, um, you can, you can, all, wait, no. What, another new thing is both the 13 and the 15 inch models have a choice of Intel or AMD. That's right. Yeah. And and so they that's eliminated new. that confusion. The other thing, and to be fair, look, the, the AMD 4000 series, Ryzen 4000 is fantastic. Um, yeah. 5000 would be better, but the, the, the version that was in the original, uh, well, I guess it would have been the Surface Laptop 3, which mm -hmm. was a 3000 series, was garbage. 
So th this is an important update. I, and, and I'm sure from Microsoft's perspective, it, when pressed, they would argue that part of the reason they had to go with the previous gen is they work with the silicon maker to customize the hardware for the hard computer, whatever nonsense that means. Um, I, it's like a Surface Edition chip. I think what we're going to discover when we see all the benchmarks and everything is that it didn't amount to anything. I don't quite understand what the point of that is, but but it's okay. It's a it, it's a it's a capable chipset. You know, it's okay. Yeah. Surface laptop is a beautiful computer. Yep. Uh, always has been. It still is. It's exactly the same. So if you liked it, it hasn't changed. The, the form factor has not changed in the slightest. There is a new color, right? A nice blue color. And there were a bunch of, um, uh, we'll call them Microsoft Teams peripherals, most of which are jet black, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I, I was surprised Mary they were Jones all black. Said, yeah. She's like, why are these photos in black me. or white? I know. Paul, I go to you Paul, know. can you send me the photos of the peripherals? And he sends them. I'm like, why yeah. did you send me black and white? He's like, because they're black. They're black. <laughs> <laughs> they're literally black on, on a white background. Like they're not. No, um, you know, when I saw this announcement, I was way more excited about the peripherals than I was about the laptop. Um, it, okay. Here's why. Because the webcam had been rumored for years, right? Like, Brad, I think mm -hmm. Brad first wrote about it, like, in 2019, that they were going to make their own webcam and sell it independently, right? Okay. And what was, the, by about, way, what was the last time they came up with a webcam? Like a life cam or something? We're talking yeah, life several, cam. pre-Windows pre yeah. 10, like a long, long time ago. Right. I know. And then the headsets, the wireless headset and the wired mm -hmm. headset, I had written about that in 2018. I went back and looked and I'm like, oh man, I had a leak on that in 2018. So, okay, here we are like years yeah. later and here they come. Because for it's, me, the headset makes a ton of sense. Like you're a business company. Yeah. People All of it makes are sense. working from I mean, home, right? <laughs> but you know, this would have made a lot more sense last fall, not to be a jerk yeah. about it. I mean, yeah, um, yeah. this hybrid workforce thing is is real for sure, but I think we're going to yeah. see a shift yeah, back to the office for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, this would have been huge to have had last year for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but still, it's still good. Yeah. Enough. Yeah, yeah it, it totally is. Um, and then the Surface headphones... Two plus, which are for business mm. customers. I I think that's also very good because when they first came out with Surface headphones, they weren't really meant for people to use at work. They were meant to use right. to su drown out sound at work, but they weren't actually meant to communicate at like a yeah, headset. Because you were right? at work, <laughs> you didn't need them to right. communicate. <laughs> right. You know, in fact, you would you would take them off to communicate. Um, yeah. So all these right. things are certified for teams now, which makes a ton of sense yep. because you want people to be using these with teams at home um, or wherever you're working remotely and be able to use them as a two-way headset, you know, with a microphone and and speakers, right? Yeah, yep. So yeah, I, I, I thought the peripherals, <sighs> like when I first saw it, I'm like, I want to try out the peripherals. I, I like the laptop. It's like, yeah. Looks nice. You know, they're making big performance and battery life claims on it, but I feel like I yeah. know what the Surface Laptop is since I use the Surface Laptop 3. All yeah, you do. Time, so. Yeah. No, the experience is going to be exactly the same, which yeah. is fine. It's, a, as you know, it's a yeah. fantastic laptop. It is. Um, yeah. You know, but uh, I, I feel like when you're not exactly the market leader, when you are uh, every year are criticized for not having several crucial features, yeah. you have a lot of headroom to make improvements. And man, do they, they just, I just don't, you know. I know. So and I, and you I, know, let's yeah. let's do some theorizing about why on that too, because oh, I have a huge guess, theory about this. Yeah. Okay, so here's my guess no, about yeah, it. Yeah. I, um, I think they've either got a lot of components and parts in warehouses that they need to use up. <laughs> okay. Which be. they might, or yep. because they're one of the smaller PC makers comparatively to other Windows 10 PC makers, um, they're kind of at the end of the line, even though they are Microsoft, when companies come out yeah. with new things that they are offering to OEMs, right? Oh, that's true. And they don't get preferential pricing. And, and right. Yeah. No, that, right. by the way, those, those are both absolutely true. Uh, but I think there's a bigger reason. Um, and when you, when you go back, like, you know, the surface strategy, just like someone, anything else you can look at, like, I, I just wrote about this, about one plus, for example, you know, their strategy yeah. was something when they started, but as you move forward and you evolve, it kind of changes over mm -hmm. time. And I feel yeah. like with surface, what they've come to understand is that the, the money they're making, the sales they're making are coming largely from businesses, not from individuals. Yeah. And businesses have a really different mindset 
than yeah. uh, individuals do. I'm, I'm over here screaming about Thunderbolt 3 or USB 4 and blah, blah, blah. And businesses are like, no, we just want them everything to be the same so that as we move forward, all the peripherals always work. You always have service connect. You know, they want that compatibility thing. And I think yeah. this slow and steady wins the race kind of mentality is um, a reality from its business customers. Yeah. You know, they, they don't want yeah, Surface they, to push forward want, with radical new no. designs. You no, know? agree. I totally agree so with I, you th on that. And they, they my, even say yeah. that all the time, right? <laughs> oh, okay. You know what surprises yeah, me to hear you say that um, this is a business product and not an end user product. Such a pretty... Thing. Right. Well, I, I, Surface very clearly was designed, designed from the get-go to take on the iPad yeah. in the consumer space yeah, I mean, and it's, it's gorgeous. kind of bridge the gap. Yeah. But yeah. over time, you know, as they've kind of padded out the product line a little bit, and of course, there's nothing more traditional than a laptop, right? Um, right. You know, this is a thing uh, that doesn't meet a lot of the needs of average users because of its lack of ports and capabilities and so forth. But mm. it, it is, it, it's a great looking computer for sure. I, I mean... Uh, but I, I think they've hit a certain level of success with businesses now. They just don't want to screw that up. Mm -hmm. I really think that's the, how unfortunately, a, that's become the, the goal. How big know? a business is this? Well, per quarter, it's four somewhere between one year. and two billion. Oh, that's yeah, pretty big. So far, All right. Yeah, four to, four to even six maybe at this point, right? How, where do they compare them. with the big OEMs like HP, Dell? And they don't. They're not in the they're right not even all. close, right? No. Yeah. No, Apple, Apple's Mac business is somewhere between eight and 10 times the size of service. Really? Yeah. It's Holy only close. cow. By, by revenue, right? So uh, this but, isn't a hobby, but it's not exactly a big... I mean, they, it's, a, it's a billion dollar business. Yeah. One of their, quote, right. you know, billion dollar business. Well, but it's, yeah. not, it's nowhere near as big as... what they used to be. I mean, it's... No, uh, and cloud, you know, it's not, not like their cloud business or any of those yeah. businesses. Look, at, right? at, at a billion dollars a quarter, even if that's where it rested forever... Um, just so Microsoft employees at a show can pop open a lid that has the Microsoft logo on yeah. it. And it's a beautiful looking machine. Yeah. It's probably enough. You know, it's probably enough. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Um, and, I'm, it, and it's it, more it, successful than that, for sure. Yeah. It doesn't, it does, but it wouldn't even need to make money because it's just a. But here, see, but here's the problem, right? So uh, we live in a world of tech enthusiasts. You know, if you're an Apple guy or a Google guy or a Microsoft guy, whatever it is, I mean, you there are these there are these dark sides to the equation that we try to ignore because it would make us crazy if we focused on it for too much, you know. Mm -hmm. And on the Microsoft front, it, for people who love Surface, and it's completely understandable, I would never criticize somebody for being a Surface fan. They're, they're beautiful machines, mm -hmm. um, but you, you have to always kind of hedge your conversation a little bit. Well, well, yeah, they don't have this, not that. Yeah, well, you know, they're, they're always a little bit behind. They had that one year where they tried to get right on the leading edge and it failed miserably for them. And I really, and they've been gun shy, I think, since then. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that maybe that has played a role as well. But I think, like I said, the success they've had, I think, has come from business. That's so Microsoft. It's fine. There's nothing embarrassing mm -hmm. about it. But for those individuals who care about this stuff, it's like, well, I'd like them to go, you know, be a little more innovative. I mean, there's always this stuff. People, I guess oh, so many people argue things to me like, well, I mean, success means different things. I mean, they uh, inspired the PC makers to uh, make better computers and now they do. And it's like, no, they didn't. <laughs> the, the, the thing that Surface tried to inspire PC makers to do was make tablets. And that has failed miserably. Every one of those companies, HP, Dell, Lenovo, et cetera, et cetera, has made multiple Surface Pro clones. And I'm sorry, folks, but I know there are people who love them and need them and, and use them. Uh, this has not taken over the PC industry. That initiative, which started with Windows 8 and continued until Windows 10, failed. It just did. And Surface itself has had to adapt as well. Um, in the world of that type of computer, Surface probably sells pretty well, <laughs> you know, but it's a tiny part of the market. Um, and even there, they've kind of fallen behind. I mean, we're in Surface Pro 7 Plus. They haven't changed the design since Surface 3. You know, yeah. this is a, a, a business that is conservative mm -hmm. from a design standpoint, probably for all the, for the financial yeah. reasons that Mary Jo mentioned earlier, the, uh, just yeah. the investment you have to yeah. put into this. I mean, they have to ride it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they have a bunch uh, of aluminum stamped out yeah. aluminum things in the uh, warehouse. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes <laughs> right. And, and to... And you're you're dead on about the businesses don't really want anything too crazy new, no, I right? Because that. you you, nope. 
you know how to, you, you get employees, you want to give oh everyone a stock thing that everyone has, right? right? <laughs> my computer is like a tablet and the, the, the keyboard's under the screen now. And I don't know, what am I doing? It's probably you know, safe to buy it from Microsoft yeah. too. Same thing, you know, nobody ever got fired well, from buying IBM. <laughs> Uh, it's not that safe. Uh, yeah. Surface has had a host of reliability problems over the years. Uh, Mary Jo, do you have anything to say about that? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I, I may mean, be it's an example. Unfortunately, of that very common. My laptop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's why Microsoft yeah. will always quote. Yeah. No, they've like, had uh, cracked they, screens, right? Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Lots of lots of problems. Lots of problems. Uh, power management problems. Yeah. You know, all kinds of yeah. stuff. It's, it's um, tough it, competition. I mean, yeah. HP, Dell, and Lenovo, all three have really nice laptops. Right. Right, which again, some people yeah. believe is because of Surface. For some reason, it's not. I mean, these guys oh, were making Surface. Surface. premium. Yeah. Yes, really, the, the the kick in the ass, so to speak, that the PC industry got was from Apple. Right, uh, the but these are Air all Ultrabooks, one. essentially. Right, yeah, which yeah. are all MacBooks, yeah. MacBook Airs, and the, the and the Surface laptop is absolutely Microsoft's MacBook Air. Doesn't, I mean, that's what it is. That's fine. <laughs> I don't mean that as a criticism. It's impossible as a PC yeah. fan. To look at the MacBook Air and not say, why can't we have one of those? Well, now we do. We have 30 of them. But um, in fact, <laughs> Intel created a specification yeah. for Ultrabooks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> so it's it's a thing. I mean, so that no, it's, I think, it, Apple influenced the PC industry, not, yeah. not, yeah. not service. Yeah. Well, I mean, we used to always talk about how terrible the quality was on Windows laptops. And Microsoft goes back to that a lot. And they say, you know, we wanted to give reference designs to these guys and show them how to do things, right? So that's when what I, people are meaning, uh, I think, when they say to you, like, Microsoft showed them how to do it, right? I don't believe that Microsoft has any particular expertise in this area. I'm sorry. No, I, I, I agree with you. A, I think the, software maker. The I, Dell XPS and, is, you get, is nicer. Uh, the, right. the the yeah. Lenovo ThinkPad. Yeah. The, you got oh, the you have yep. the X one uh, yeah. nano, nano, right, Mary Jo? Right. How, right. how does that compare yeah. to your um, laptop? Your Surface laptop. Um, it's. I feel like they're very different machines, right? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. I feel like the Nano is something that's awesome for just throwing in your bag because it's super, super light. Um, and I feel like laptop three is what I use when I want something kind of with a cracked meatier. screen. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> yes. My, no, I don't. Yeah, have two screens. Screen. It's like having two screens. You know, my how motherboard's that even creativity. working. <laughs> No, look, I, yeah, my, my mother Surface has done, working again. Woo. <laughs> there are some things about Surface that are interesting, right? Uh, when, when they went to a three by two display yeah. with Surface Pro 3, I think, um, they hit on the right design for that kind of product because you can hold it vertical, horizontal. It, it yeah. looks right. Like if you have a yeah. 16 by nine display and you turn it sideways, for some reason, it looks like it's, you know, a, a skyscraper. It's got this weird aspect ratio. Um, but three by two yeah. or four by three. Th those work for those machines that switch back and forth. Now they've continued using three by two mm -hmm. on laptop and a book, which can be used like that as well. But, um, and that's kind of unique, but you'll notice they haven't really inspired the rest of the market to go in that direction. Um, you mm -hmm. see a couple of three by twos, you see three by two from other OEMs on um, yeah. tablets, you know, with a few of them that exist. And then on a, a handful of um, like uh, convertible PCs that can kind of swap around really the happy middle ground there is 16 by 10, which we are starting to see. Um, but that service didn't do that. Uh, the other PC makers are doing 16 by 10, including, by the way, mm. who? Apple, <laughs> right? All of the MacBook products are 16 by 10 displays and have been for a long time. So, you know, that's fine. It doesn't, I, I'm, like, I'm not trying to dump on Surface. I, I, but I, I, But as an enthusiast, it's hard not to be disappointed by the lackluster upgrades. I talk, I talk to PC makers all the time. And I, I mean like two to four times a month about different announcements. And they have these elaborate presentations. They talk about feedback from users. And these are the improvements over the previous version. The bezels are smaller. The screens are taller. Pixels are denser. This and that. We get more port, this kind of thing. They wanted this and blah, blah, blah. And Surface is like, here's the same thing again. Uh, it, it's just, oh, but we changed the chipset on the inside. I mean, okay. And, and that probably is great for businesses, like I said. But as an enthusiast, you, you know, you use one of these products, you're like, okay, this is great. But the next time I'd like to see this, 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 and, and Surface is never going to do any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. They're just not, that's just not who, that's not what this business is. Yeah. It started out as something, like I said, and, and what it is today is something not different. completely different, but it's different. Yeah. By the way, it probably uh, doesn't have Thunderbolt or USB 4 because 
uh, AMD doesn't support them out of the box, and I imagine they want to have exactly the same ports on the Intel and AMD. Don't you dare excuse this company. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they still want to sell lots of those Surface charging. Well, okay, fair enough. I, and I, 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 by the way, one thing I do like is that they have an AMD option, um, only on this product, though, right? I think right. it's the only one. Um, and I think Mary Jo mentioned this earlier, but they're... they're them having AMD and Intel across all of the different versions is actually new to yeah. this year. Um, mm -hmm. Last uh, with Surface Laptop three, I think I don't remember exactly, but I want to say the 13-inch version for consumers was only AMD, and the 15-inch version was only Intel. And business customers could choose. I could be getting this completely wrong. I'm sorry, I, but it, it's it was it was kind of a weird mix. It was kind of hard to there know. There was what a weird getting. mix. Yeah. And now it's like, look, now we have whatever you want, you know, and and that's. That's the right. If you're going to do AMD and Intel, that's the right way to do it. Yeah. I, I will say, uh, off the top of my head, I'm trying to come up with a product name. I know HP does certain uh, premium PC lines that have some choice of Intel and AMD processors. I think that I'm almost positive the way that they handle it is if you get Intel, you get Thunderbolt or USB 4 now or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if you have AMD, you don't. You know, because they don't support that. It's an Intel thing. Although in the future, they should support USB 4, right? That's a industry standard so they'll mm -hmm. they'll get it eventually i don't it's not on this particular product yeah yeah pricing is still pretty high right the lowest end starts at a thousand dollars i think it goes up to 2500 yeah. well you know I, right? yeah and they'll be on sale and so I, this yeah, is the yeah. price of a premium uh highly capable laptop ultrabook it's mm -hmm. it's it's okay um, by the way, the other thing I find slightly outrageous is, like I said, Microsoft has not released a new webcam in several years. I don't remember when the last Life Cam came out. Um, yeah. But uh, it doesn't support Windows Hello. <laughs> Are you kidding I know. Me? That was surprising. Like, that was really surprising. Guys, <laughs> seriously. Like, Windows Hello shipped in Windows was, 10 six years ago. I know. And I was now, you come out with, now you come out with a webcam. <laughs> you, the creator of Windows Hello. I know. And it's not in your webcam. That's crazy. It's pretty <laughs> Do you funny. Think, I mean, was it because That's of price crazy. sensitivity? That was my only guess on why. Because um, I think it's 70, yeah, uh, 70 bucks, right? For this the isn't a, yeah, by the way, this is not an expensive product for a webcam. No. For sure. No. Um, but still, I mean, come on. Really? It's that, pretty uh, cute. Just, yeah. It's very cute. Yeah. It's super cute. It looks like a little guy on your computer. <laughs> I assume that giant uh, touchpad looking thing on the left must be a microphone. Must be. Yeah. Right? Or somewhere to rest your yeah. forehead when you get tired. No, no, that's for the Windows Hello <laughs> fingerprint reader. Oh, that's it. Mm -hmm. oh. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, so, you know, here's another little interesting oddity from this launch. So uh, four of the five peripherals they launched were all uh, branded Microsoft, like the Microsoft webcam and the headsets, right? Yeah. Surface headphones 2 Plus are the only Surface one. Um, so does that mean they design, Surface team only designed the headphones and didn't touch any of those other Oh, no, I bet this is going to be the same team, I, I would imagine. I don't I know that think, for a fact. right? I, I think that, I wouldn't look into that too far. Um, Surface yeah. Headphone 2 is a product that already exists. The difference yeah. between Surface uh, Headphone 2 and 2 Plus is the dongle that makes it Teams compliant. So mm -hmm. they, they really just took an existing product and, you know, yeah. did a slight upgrade. The other stuff... I, th I suspect it has to do with the fact that they're promoting Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Uh, and so Microsoft, you know, um, I don't know that this right. points to any future naming change or whatever, but yeah. for peripherals and whatnot, I don't know. It seems like they do a mix of Microsoft and Surface peripherals as it is, right? With keyboards and mice yeah. and yeah, I guess they do. whatever yeah. else. So, yeah. yeah. It just feels like if you're, if you're, the hardware team, maybe there isn't just one hardware team, but if there were, you'd have everything with consistent branding, like all Microsoft, right? You would think that, Mary Jo, but uh, let me introduce you to Microsoft, <laughs> a company that is incapable of being consistent. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. <laughs> you know, unfortunately. Yeah, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I do know. I know, I know, I know. Uh, all right. Um, and Spiran, you want to talk about that? Just, just briefly. I mean, I, I just found it interesting on the same day that Microsoft announced this, uh, that Dell completely revamped their Inspiron laptop lineup, right? Which are, by they the way, far from inspiring. They're, they're <laughs> well, the actually, the, laptops, if you looked at, but if you look at the new one, those these are actually kind of nice. Oh, no, like the, really? They're completely oh. redesigned. 
So there's 13, 14, 15, and 16 inch oh. form factors. Ooh. 14 comes in traditional laptop and um, uh, two in one, you know, convertible style. The 16 inch version, I think they're probably, they, they, since they didn't say this, I'm guessing they're all 16 by nine displays, except for the 16, which is a 16 by 10. Uh, which in the 16 can be had with eight series processors, which uh, has uh, optional discrete graphics, either um, NVIDIA GTX or RTX. Oh, wow, that's tempting. So pretty, pretty serious. And they're not expensive. You know, an Inspiron uh, 14 starts at 549. And uh, the Inspiron 16 Plus starts at 949. So that's kind of the range. Uh, you say Inspiron like aspirin. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why I just said that. I, I have a speech deficiency. Um, <laughs> well, I don't. No one knows. Does Dell know? I don't I know, know if anybody knows how to pronounce it. I, know. I it. always think of Inspiron. Right? I always say Inspiron or Inspiron. Yeah. No, I don't say Inspiron. Right, right, right. Inspiron. Right. But the, I don't know the, but right. all of these computers come with a choice of uh, Intel Core or AMD Ryzen 5000 user. Yeah. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I actually yeah. screwed that up. Ryzen 5000 mobile processors. 11th generation Intel Core U series processors, and then on the 16 H series processors. So this is what we buy for our employees who want Windows machines. We buy them in sprints. In sprints. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any in instances with your in sprints? <laughs> <laughs> incidents? No incidents with the in sprints. Any <laughs> incidents uh, with your But they're not, you know, uh, it's funny because... Uh, uh, one of our employees left, and so there's an Inspirin lying around. And I don't notice people where I... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're saying that. No, I, <laughs> it's your fault. Yeah. I polluted the pool. You polluted the Inspirin pool. Stop. <laughs> Inspirin in the pool. Um, and no one's get, no one's grabbed it because it's it's clunky. And But you know what? Maybe these new ones... Yeah. The new, if you look at the new ones, they're they're beautiful. They really are nice. Looking. Oh, no. And OLED screens, too. I love it. That's really nice. That's I miss OLED screens. So actually, I don't think these do have OLED screens. Oh, uh, screens. your article so, said they did. I read it on <laughs> therat.com. No, it didn't. Why do you so, believe that site? Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Fake news, Leo. No, so uh, when Dell oh, no, released it's the to new... The, uh, to the XPS it added. Uh, right, okay. so the XPS 13, the new version, which was redesigned, probably shipped mid-year last year, late last year, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Did not have an OLED display I have option that one. at the time. Yeah. Now it does, and it's a three hundred dollar upgrade. At the you know, no, that's not bad. Now, well, you just buy it now. They send you a screen, you pop it in. You have to. Have it's not good for battery life, I think. So it's probably. <clears throat> but my God, but it's like but the it's richest, gorgeous. deepest, oh, yeah. inky kind of color. I had a, uh, yeah, ThinkPad uh, Yoga with an OLED screen. It was just yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, it's almost too good. You know, it's it's, it's, it's almost too good weird. for me anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe you're good enough to have one. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, Actually, I have at home. What am I? Who am I kidding? I, my my PC monitor is a fifty five inch OLED. Right, nice. it's crazy, mm -hmm. it's crazy. It's great for Valheim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, mm -hmm. on Monday after I got back from vacation, uh, I. I came in, did uh, did the uh, the uh, NVIDIA event, and actually I didn't come in. I did it from home, and then I turned on Valheim at about I don't know 10 a.m. and didn't stop till mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Ew, ew. Oh, wow. wow. I don't even think I went to the bathroom in that period of time. <laughs> just, <laughs> just had a like a big golf cup next to me, and <laughs> like one of them Am like an Amazon driver. Um, yep. <laughs> no, I just uh, yeah. So I'm I'm that's. Not good. Wow, that's great. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it sure is. It's fun to have a good a good game. It really is. Yeah. And it, on a fifty five inch monitor, I feel like I'm there. It's really nice. I was gonna say, the, on a fifty five inch monitor, the people are like actual people size. They're actual size. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go, yeah. Hey, neighbor. Oh no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's Viking. <laughs> um, patch. Quickly, before I go off and buy a new Inspiron, patch Tuesday mm -hmm. tidbits. This was a big one. I know. A, a doozy, as you say. A doozy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, so we don't usually talk about Patch Tuesday on Windows Weekly because neither of us are security oh, experts. You leave it for, right? for Steve Gibson. We do. We do. But right, I think right. the one takeaway from this week's Patch Tuesday yesterday was if you still have not patched your Exchange servers... Uh, Good news. You better get you save, on. <laughs> you save time because there's four new patches. I know, right? So, yeah, now the NSA and oh the FBI are involved. <laughs> yeah, oh it's not, not getting better, right? Yeah, Microsoft's got a whole bunch of additional guidance, more um, 
patches that you should be applying. And then I don't really understand web shells that well, but well, that's FBI what the exploit is... does. It ends up putting on a shell on your system so that okay. a bad, even after you mitigate, you know, you patch, yeah. the bad guy still has access to your system. And that's oh. why Ooh. the FBI is going around saying, <laughs> stop the shells, man. Stop yeah. the shells. Yeah. Right. So they're actually going in and proactively doing this on, on servers, right? So yeah, it's it's bad news on the exchange front, exchange on-prem. Uh, Furthermore, uh, <laughs> these exchange flaws may be wormable. Yeah. So they may spread oh, from- unlocked. <laughs> Cheap and unlocked, man. <laughs> Prestige and infinity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so they could go from exchange server to exchange server without any intervention. Yeah. That's Not holy sure. cow. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Not good. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, but there were so there were a ton of um, other additional typical, typically, like on Patch Tuesday, lots of other things that you need to patch. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, though, is if you're running Windows 10 and you still haven't moved to the new Edge, new Edge, Credge, as we call it among friends, um, as of the patches this week for Windows, Microsoft is taking away Legacy Edge and replacing it with the new Edge. So if you already have New Edge, nothing will happen. If you don't, you are going to no longer have access to Legacy Edge once you apply the Windows patches. And they warned people about this back in February, but I think people right. forgot. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. Uh, it's do you think there's a big group of. of people out there using this thing still? I do, I mean, based on how many people retweeted this when I <laughs> tweeted it yesterday. Well, I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, outside of the bubble that yeah. is our Twitter accounts. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. How many people still use Old Edge, right? Um, I think yeah. some companies probably have, like, kind of standardized on it and have yet to move to the new Edge. We, and obviously, there's still people who use IE11, so I guess there are probably are people who use the Old Edge. Oh, well. boy. I know. Yeah, so um, it's just something to be aware of uh, that... At once you apply the patches to all, pretty much all the flavors of Windows 10, uh, not all all the way back, but almost all of them, you're going to get the new Edge built in. It's a, I think it's every supported version, right? Certainly. I think. Or I don't know about some of the old um, long-term servicing channel, like really old, old oh, ones. Okay. If it goes yeah, yeah, with yeah. that one, but basically everything. So, yeah. Right. Just, just word to the Y. I like it. In <laughs> fact, I started using the side tabs, and yeah, yeah, I like it. Yep. Yeah, it's cool. It's comfortable. It's kind of like an old pair it of is. shoes. I see no reason <laughs> to run out and get a different browser. Oh, I think yeah. about this all the time. What are you I'm like that at? person who like you finally get everything just right, and you're like, yeah. all right, how can I screw now this? What, up? Now what can I do? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I I can't. This is like you're a, that guy. Yeah, you're yeah, that guy. Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah, it's like a, you should use Linux, Paul. You can. There's something you can do every day. You can screw up your computer like <laughs> anytime. Um, I am going to be doing some kind of a Linux thing soon. Are that's, you? That's coming. Yeah. Talk to me because yeah. I'm your yeah. one stop will, shop I, uh, for Linux BS. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So I don't want to sidetrack the entire podcast, but off the topic. Oh, let's because it's it. Xbox time anyway. Oh no. Okay, go ahead. If you, no, if you had to choose a Linux distribution for me, I mean, for you, yeah. Where would you go? What direction? So I'll give you the fifteen second spiel. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say a list of fifty. No, no, no. Okay, fifteen seconds. There's yeah, really two good. kind of different. There's a there's a fork in the road ahead. People okay. who want stability and not necessarily the latest software mm -hmm. will go with a Debian-like distribution. Debian is uh, is what I use for my server because it's stable as hell. They do yep. update with security patches, but you may be using many version old software. Yeah. You're not going to get no, I don't want the latest that. firewall. I don't want that. That's, That's right. Different. That's not you. So the other fork in the road is Arch-based distributions. Arch is what we call a rolling distro. So you're always going to have the latest stuff. The risk of that, but I think it's appropriate for you, is sometimes, uh, you know, it could be a little bleeding edge. Not yeah. completely. But that's for that reason, I recommend an Arch. It's like the Ubuntu is to Debian. Manjaro is to Arch. So it's got a much easier yeah. installer. It'll give you a setup 
a beautiful setup very quickly. And Manjaro's uh, folks do something I think is really smart, which is they're, they don't immediately adopt the latest rolling update. They wait a week or two to see if, if there's a problem, and then they do it. So it's kind of it's, – it's the best of both worlds. You still get a very up to – that's what I use is you get a very up-to-date – version of um, uh, all your software, but you're not running on the bleeding edge all the time. It's pretty stable. Manjaro is amazing. And the installer yeah, okay. works on almost all PCs. In fact, it's it's really rare. There's a, there's the if you want to go in the in, uh, Debian side, I would look at Pop OS from System76. They're doing yeah, that's some, what I have looked at. They are doing some really nice stuff. But it and it's more up to date. Pop, uh, you know, System76 does a lot to keep that more up to date than say Debian or even Ubuntu. Um, I don't like Ubuntu very much. I I, I yeah. question some of their choices, but De but Pop OS is great. So Pop OS or Manjaro would be your two choices, and I really like Manjaro. I think you. I think yeah. for you, okay. it's the enthusiast Linux. There you go. Yeah, mm. it's what I use there on my go. on my. Uh, I don't want the Surface Laptop Linux. I want the enthusiast. You Linux. want the uh, yeah the ThinkPad <laughs> Linux. <laughs> the th yeah, yeah. The th what are you going to run Linux. it on? See, that's an open question. I might put it on an Intel NUC. For uh for the desk and yeah. then I runs have great. whatever choice of I've got all kinds of runs stuff great. for portable yeah. computers. I put it on the new Dell uh, Aurora R10 Ryzen edition. It's got an NVIDIA mm -hmm. 3080. Everything works out yep. of the box. Well, wow. it's okay. uh, you know you immediately get NVIDIA drivers. Um, it's really uh, it couldn't be simpler. It's really good. I can send you my uh, my setup list. Uh, maybe I'll send you well, that okay. stuff. I do. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Because you know I don't do you use chocolatey on Windows. No, so that's. No, but I, I bet I could imagine wanting it on Linux for sure. Well, and all Linux is done with I, a I package should, I, manager, I, which makes it so much yeah. easier for this. Yeah. Honestly, given how often I build and rebuild computers, I should use a package. You should manager use Chocolatey. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But Chocolatey, yeah. nature Windows is isn't quite as complete as a real package manager would be. And a, yeah. and uh, I mean, you're gonna love Manjaro. I use um, I use Pac Man is the default package manager. <laughs> P A C M A N, but I use a uh, third-party thing called Yay because the other thing that's great about the Arch distros is there's something called the Arch User Repository where if it's not available in the main distribution, almost certainly somebody's going to build it for the AUR, and it's incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can run any, you can get anything. It's really okay. good, including uh, probably uh, COVID nineteen, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> is the Mary Jo fashioning a noose as we speak? I, can't see I am. Well, you're going to love the that. Xbox segment coming up, but first, let's. <laughs> but first, let's right, get right. some more Windows in. There's a uh, new dev yeah. build. Yes. So we talked earlier about how I didn't think Surface Slat or whatever the nuance thing was the biggest story. Um, I think this might be the biggest story. What? Not the minor dev build. I know. I know. What? I said, what? Hold on a second. I don't think anyone caught this. I, I tend to blow over these. I look at the builds, the, the announcement post to see if there's anything new. There's almost yeah. never anything new, right? Right. Couldn't care less usually, which is sad because I'm like first, like primarily <laughs> a Windows guy and I, I just find myself not caring. Oh, I know what you're going to say now. I, right? Yeah. If you read <laughs> yeah. this thing, they have a section called changes and improvements. Okay. And in it, they it. suggest that they are killing timeline. What? No, wait. Windows. No, stop. Oh, wait. you have something can I, else? Can I say something? No, yes, of I, course. but I, I saw that line, okay? Mm -hmm. So it says, through your Microsoft account, you'll no longer have the option to upload new activity and timeline. But then it says, AAD connected accounts won't be impacted. Right, that's why I said may. <laughs> because, right, but see, okay, okay. Uh, but, I, but here's the thing. This is actually the second step back from timeline. Right. Originally yeah. timeline. Well, originally timeline was just for Windows 10 PCs. And of course, people are like, well, what about yeah. mobile devices? You know, um, and it, it, it's hard to get stuff into timeline from a mobile device. So if you have a Microsoft Office application on mobile, the activity you do in that app should technically appear in timeline in the sense that you'll see that document. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but the only way to get it in, like natively integrated on mobile was if you use the Microsoft um, launcher. Right. Which is, uh, you right. know, for Android. And the preview version of the new version of Launcher, which uh, first came out, I think, I don't know, November or something late last year, they got rid of it. It's gone. Like, they're not adding it back. Yeah. And uh, they've effectively killed Timeline on mobile. And so when they kill MSA support, meaning like um, Timeline for individuals, essentially, 
and they only offer it for, um, we'll call them commercial accounts, I guess, AAD connected accounts. Uh, I mean, that's step two, you know, from what yeah. where I okay. can tell. Do you think anyone yeah. uses timeline except you? I don't even, I don't even. <laughs> I'm just, no, and, and to answer you your question, you that's why they're either, killing right? it. <laughs> I know, right? right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. However, but here, here's what I'll say about that. So there are a lot yeah. of features that get added to Windows. And unfortunately, our experience over the past several years has been a lot of those features get killed out of Windows True. as well. So we had that My People integration, the taskbar. It actually is a mm -hmm. great example. Um, and this thing, right? And so here's the thing yeah. that those two features have in common that they don't have in common with things like, 3D paint or what or paint 3D or yeah. the 3D yeah. viewer. These are productivity. Well, actually, I guess those technically are productivity features, although I would say those are kind of creative features, but they're productivity, yeah. like they're core productivity features, right? One of the things that you get in this timeline view, which is really, it's actually task view. When you go to the task view, there's two things there, yeah. timeline and uh, your uh, virtual desktop uh, stuff, right? Mm -hmm. and so this is in the yeah. same UI. Virtual desktop is probably not used by that many people either. However, yeah. if you ever said to somebody, hey, by the way, Microsoft's going to get rid of virtual desktops, or, yeah, mm -hmm. virtual desktops, people would freak, right? Because the people who do use this really rely on it. So yeah. no, I don't use it. Um, but I, it, it also, to me, it, it kind of feels like a um, like a core productivity feature. And I'm a little surprised. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look it. at the second part of the paragraph, it gives you mm -hmm. other ways to do the exact same thing, right? Which right, is, right. if you want to see <laughs> your web history, you can use Edge or other browsers. If you want to see your recently used files, which is why you would probably use Timeline, you can do that in OneDrive and Office now, like it surfaces those things, right? Mary Jo, I'm going to say to Maybe. you what I said to Leo earlier. Do not you dare <laughs> defend this company. No, no I, you know I, look, I, I, I like, I, you know, what? I like that they're getting rid of a problem that I feel they have, which is too many ways to do the same thing. Okay, and it makes fair. it confusing, yep. right? That's fair. I, I do. <laughs> I, I agree with you in the, but look, this is even truer for people who are AAD guys. If you're storing files in OneDrive or SharePoint, you're sharing them with other people in your workplace and blah, yeah. blah, blah. You're going to have access to that in the Microsoft Office applications. You're going to have access to that in the Microsoft Office yeah. application itself. You're going to have access to that from office.com, right? So that stuff, yeah. those are all different. Depending on how you work, that's the way to do it. The, the thing yeah. that Timeline promised, and again, I don't use it so, but I, I think the, 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 <laughs> the cool thing about Timeline is it's not just documents, right? And it's yeah, not just right. office documents, right? Yeah, um, it's right. non-office documents. It was websites yeah. that you visited, that kind of thing. I mean, mm -hmm. there are different ways to promote this stuff to the user. True. I think it's fair, true. like um, My People was another feature I never used. Part of the reason mm -hmm. was that they never made it compelling. Well, mm -hmm. they is a tough word to say. Uh, it was never compelling enough because no third-party services ever supported it. Yeah. Um, and honestly, uh, the notion of managing contacts on a computer these days, it strikes me as being horribly out of date anyway. Yeah. I don't yeah. think this is something right. we, a lot yeah, of people true. do. But yeah, no, but I, yeah, I, I, my point here is not that I use it and it's important. It, no, my my point is it. this is a core productivity feature in Windows 10 and they put a little asterisk at the bottom of a blog post no one's going to read because it's about one build mm -hmm. in the dev, <laughs> you know, dev channel. I mean, yeah. th this was like a really sly way of saying, oh, by the way, we're probably getting it rid is. of this thing. I mean, no, that, it that's is. so typical it's, of them. It's, you know? very, it's a little shady, but I, I don't yeah. know that I would call this a productivity feature. I'm I would call it a, right now. <laughs> I would call it, I would yeah, call no, it okay. like many of the features they've been killing, uh, things from the previous regime at Microsoft that thought oh. they could turn Windows into a consumer thing and they realized, no, we actually shouldn't be doing that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fair. I, but I, I agree think you're with right. you. The I, way I they're, right. they're introducing this is very shady. Very shady. Yeah, it's it's a it's a terrible way to say it. <laughs> well, I mean, they tried to do it in this blog post. I guess, like you said, there's other sentences yeah. about how you can see yeah, your web yeah. history and, and edge and all. Yeah, okay. of course yeah. you can. Um, yeah. There's the, you can put a cherry on this. Um, yeah. Sandwich <laughs> or whatever this is, <laughs> but. Uh, it, uh, but yeah, I mean, so yeah, timeline is quite likely going to go into a long list, a growing list of things that seemed like a good idea at one time in Windows 10. Yeah. And either yep. weren't used or supported enough or whatever. And now we're back and Microsoft is backing away from Agreed. it. So I, th I think it's okay, big news. That? That's that. Yeah. I, okay. I, t I give it a like a on big scale. I give it like a three, <laughs> but it, it is news. <laughs> okay. Fair. Okay. 
Leo, you Thank weren't you here last week. Halfway. Yeah, what no, is Leo, this? What is this week, numeric rating system you're talking? About? No, last week we were <laughs> so, we were we were debating what to lead the show with, and you would have been proud. Right. Yeah. I led with Java. Wow, that's true. Why would that's that make true. me proud? No, because Paul wanted well, to lead with Paint being in in the store. Oh, oh no, you meant you led with Oracle Java. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 I no, led, I no, she with, didn't. No, no Microsoft. No, Oracle, no, Microsoft. Nope. What Microsoft's doing around Java. Op, uh, the open. Oh, hey, allow me. Uh, let me. Let me read what this is because it's hilarious. Oh boy, <laughs> what she led with was an open JDK. a preview of something called Open JDK for Azure. Which is, <laughs> no, not Mary Joe. We usually was... like to save those for the enterprise tip of the week. Guys, yeah, you know, like. No. <laughs> Guys, you don't know because I brought in the whole history of Microsoft. She, we she got into forced Scott me to McNeely. participate in this discussion about Java. No, and then he he wanted to put Paint and being in the store as the lead. Microsoft Paint. I'm I see kidding. who won, by the way. Sense. I see who won yeah, this no, debate. She'll, 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 win, she'll win every <laughs> yeah, one of these battles. Yeah. But I just want to mention that the name of the podcast is Windows Weekly, not Open JDK Weekly. I just, <laughs> just, kind of, <laughs> just throwing you know it what? out. It looks like there wasn't a lot to talk about last week. It there was wasn't. a slow week. It yeah, was tough. True. We had to, we had to flip a, a coin, and leave. I had the yeah. two-headed coin that we flipped. That's true. And- <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, here's the headline. It's no visual J++, but Microsoft loves Java. <laughs> Come on, it's that's been, huge, you guys. I, I, guys. Visual J was huge. I'm just going to say, paint about. in the store. Paint in the store. Paint in the store is a little weak, I admit. Yeah, yes. that's a tough week because there's neither one really shouts. No. Headline, no. get the you know news. What? I'm going to take my paint and my no- timeline and I'm just You're going home. home. <laughs> Paul does use paint. Yeah. I mean, imagine, Mary Jo, if yes, Notepad that's why. were in the store. No. Oh, no, it, Notepad when, is when in the it store, was, Leo. Oh. It, it is. And no, it is That again. was a big deal. That okay, was a big deal. So. That was a big deal. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you see what I'm dealing with here. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, you, see, you see how this works. Ah, uh, well, so the, the telemetry wins and uh, t- and timeline will be no more. Yeah. yeah. I, and by the way, if that's, it, it, it probably is telemetry based. Sure it um, is. That's, that's fine. That's yeah. fine. I accept the ruling of the court. Telemetry you know. never lies. I get it. Um, that's <laughs> right. why they killed Except Media Center. You, and, you know. Yeah. Uh, you can make numbers say anything, as we like well, to say. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> Nobody ever used Timeline. It's probably pretty... Uh, well, that's by the way, I it's funny. You said, true, it's, right? it's, yeah. By the way, it's really funny you just said Media Center because, honestly, the, the biggest thing that I think Media Center and Timeline had in common was that people launched it by mistake, looked at it, and said, <laughs> nope. Nope, not going to use it. And that was, that was how they <laughs> used it. I, I I actually believe that I believe that's true. <laughs> yes, they yeah. actually added a uh, yeah a media center uh, line in the code that says if mm-hmm. launched for less than ten seconds, yeah. ignore then it doesn't count. Ignore. Yeah, that's why when pe- when companies put a power button in the key in the keyboard now in computers, <laughs> it has a delay on it. So if you hit it by mistake, oh, it doesn't turn as, out as it computer. should. As it right? should. Yeah. And media center should have had that too. It's like you you launch media center. It should be like, are you sure? This is. <laughs> Because most people don't want to run this. No. Apple yeah. put a Siri button on the uh, touch bar, and I hit it. It's right <laughs> above the backspace. I hit it yes. every... And the uh, last thing you want is... Boop, no, I'm not talking to that's, you. By the way, that's in one of those Intel ads. They make fun of that. And they're right. Yeah, right? They, yeah that, well, they, they made... What did she say? Uh, how to cook mutton. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, like, don't hit the Siri button. How to cook mutton. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard it's what good. you said. Now that they own Nuance, maybe they won't be so mean to Siri in the future. No, <laughs> they will. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they should be. Okay. Um, Siri, is it raining? OneDrive, 64 bits. What does that oh, mean? It's the to 21st me? century, baby. What does that mean? So to apparently, me? right. So um, if you think about applications like the applications in Microsoft Word, most of them, most people are still running the 32 bit version. Right. Uh, this is the default. There, there is a 64-bit version of those apps available. You have to go, kind of go through some hoops to get it. But most people need and want the 32-bit version because it offers compatibility with all the extensions and so forth, add-ins, whatever they call yes. it. Um, OneDrive, though, you know, OneDrive integrates with the file system in Windows 10. And by the way, also on the Mac, <laughs> where it must be 64-bit because it went Mac went 64-bit years ago, uh, 64-bit only. Uh, in fact, I... 
I would imagine the OneDrive application on on mobile, ironically, if you will, is also probably 64-bit because Android is largely 64-bit today. Most Android installs are, and all iOS installs are 64-bit. So it's a little bit weird that the OneDrive integration feature on Windows 10 is 32-bit for some reason today. I, I You kind of would assume like a file system access technology on a 64-bit version of Windows would be 64-bit, but apparently it isn't. So... They are now testing a 64-bit version of OneDrive, which you can get if you want it. And uh, they'll be, you know, obviously they'll be pushing this out um, this year, I would imagine, probably in the next major version of Windows. But um, yeah, they're going, <laughs> it's just such a, it's one of, it's, it falls into the category of, wait, they weren't already doing this? I know. That's what I thought yeah. when I read it. I'm yeah. like, wait, didn't they already have this? <laughs> they must have been, they must the have been whole... guys working on OneDrive. I know. Sorry. Isn't the whole reason, or, or not the whole reason, but one of the big selling points of this is if you're uploading a whole lot of files all at the same time, and it big matter. files too. Yeah, big files. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you get the people are like, why would you... Does it matter otherwise? <laughs> no. no. Well, it's more no. bits, Mary Jo. Come on. Do I have to explain technology to you? More bits is better. More bits is better. It's is better than 30. It's twice as good. It's twice as good. It's twice as Twice as good. You know, the math is <laughs> yeah. so obvious. I don't even. You know, I, I'm a little math challenged, but you know. <laughs> no, I, actually, I don't think you are in this case. I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there are any real improvements okay. or in, in advantages. Okay. But big files and lots of files. Yeah. All right. Especially lots of big files. I would imagine those are going to. Yeah, then know, it's really big. Particularly, right? those, that's when it really kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They should go to 65 bit just for that extra boost. I know, just because you can. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mine goes to 11. Yeah. <sighs> yep. This is where we're at. <sighs> Do you want to talk getting about getting a little punchy? Do you want to talk about Xbox yeah. now, Paul? Yeah, this is the slowest week in Xbox news in a long time. Oh. <laughs> we'll say. Um, but. Okay. So first of all, Flight Simulator, which today is available only on PC, uh, they have been updating it for free with these world packs, I think they're called. Um, world updates, I guess. Uh, we've done the UK and Ireland, Japan, the United States, and now they've done several company uh, countries, sorry, in uh, Europe, Belgium, France, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. And this is interesting because they're what they're adding is high resolution 3D photo imagery and you know, a lot of the uh, famous sites are really nicely rendered and you kind of, you can pretend you're the Luftwaffe and Strafe Paris or something or whatever, but, um, you know, they have lots of nice uh, airports and things. And so it just really visually improves matters. Um, by the way, if you look at the image on my article that I chose, which is a still frame from a video, you can actually see the impact of this imagery because the forefront of that thing is not high <laughs> resolution. See the little, the, oh, yeah. the green... Right. Yeah, yeah, so if yeah, you're familiar yeah. with Paris, you know that that's a row of beautiful fountains. It's gorgeous. Yeah. But, but it's what, what it looks like there is like a flat. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a 3D translation of a 2D image. Yeah. And that's what Flight Simulator would look like if they weren't hand, you know, enhancing parts of it. Wow. Um, so that part, it's weird that they chose that angle because it shows off how terrible it can look when you don't do what they're doing with these world updates. Does it, uh, how do you get the text on there? Does that, when you do a screenshot, does it just do that? on? No, that was just, that was part of the video. They were just explaining. Oh, okay. Of the, uh, Cause it looks like an old Paris postcard and I know that's the intent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, the, the, the two layers of words kind of um, animate in opposite directions oh, okay. in the video. Yeah, it's yeah. just, they, because some, you know, the Eiffel tower is pretty obvious, but some of the uh, monuments they show in from some of the other oh, countries, so especially you, oh, you might not so know neat. what they are. Yeah. I'm going to have to get that. That would look good on my 55 OLED. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially with that computer you got. Uh, oh yeah, you got the. You know, it's funny. You got the horsepower. You could probably hit 480p on that thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, it's funny because I play Valheim at the max uh, on it. Yeah. I still only get like 80 frames a second, even though it's only 80. Yeah, only 80. It's 120 <laughs> monitor. Yeah. I want it 120. No, okay. But when I uh, play Valheim on anything else, I've got it's like two frames a second. Mm -hmm. If if that it looks like uh, it looks like the the game ET on the twenty six hundred terrible, yeah. So it must be a challenging game, even though it's not a high. It's not um, you know they're trying to do that that kind of like an you know a, almost a little bit better than Doom, but you know You're right Doom oh, two okay Doom two Doom two yeah <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I think so I will get flight sim. Uh, I should. Can you play with a keyboard and mouse? Do you have to get a yoke and yeah. pedals and? Oh no, no, you, and, you, can, okay. yeah. no right. you can do whatever you want. I have a controller. I could use the controller, I guess. Which it is, it is coming to Xbox eventually. I mean, sometime this year it will be yeah. on the Series X and S. Uh, so yeah. yeah. 
Uh, and Amazon has a new <laughs> Xbox skill. Who knew that? Yeah. Literally, that sentence is almost the entire story. Oh. Um, so there are Alexa <laughs> skills for Xbox, meaning that you can use an Alexa device, like an Echo type device or whatever, with your Xbox to do things on the Xbox. Um, one of the new things you can do is if you're an Xbox Game Pass subscriber, you can use Alexa to ask it to download and install games that are available on Game Pass. So you can say, hey, Amazon thing, download whatever the game is on Xbox Game Pass. That's literally the skill. <laughs> so um, I, I suppose if you know exactly what game you want, this is an okay, uh, efficient way to do it. I think most people probably are going to scroll through a list of visual, you know, box art type designs where they can see the games and then pick that way. But, you know, we don't have, um, you know, we don't have our own little assistant anymore, do we? Uh, no. So, no. yeah, that's where we're going. Sorry. Uh, oh, well. No Cortana skill for you, <laughs> little Xbox. All right. Um... I think it's time for the back of the book. What do you think? I think you I passed the, the test, Paul. You didn't up. say That's anything. I was I, waiting. I'm like, I, is he going to do it? Is I really tried it? to screw him up. And I literally <laughs> almost said, why are you pausing? Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, wait, I know this. I know this. I got this. <laughs> you crack me up. Uh, time for the... Time for... Sorry. Time for... Um, Mr. Paul Therott's tip of the week, sir. Yeah, so I don't know if everyone's heard of this Google Flock thing, F-L-O-C, which I actually now have forgotten what that's, do you remember what it stands for? Something fake line of, I don't know. Um, anyway, but it's a, uh, a replacement for third-party cookie tracking and stuff in browsers. And uh, what it is is a brand new way for people or for uh, Google to track you in browsers, uh, contrary to the way they're marketing it. And so what's happening is now is there's been a lot of um, pushback against this from other players in the industry, which I, I like to see. Kind of a flock you, if you will. Um, oh. So uh, I know, I'm, I'm here all week, sorry. So uh, I've lost my train of thought. So DuckDuckGo last week came out uh, and said that they are blocking flock through their browser plugin. That's one oh, way to do it. I good. would imagine other... That's cool. Privacy. I'm sure you like block our to do it. Uh, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure they're going to be, if they don't now, they will. Right. So, cause right now they're, they're just kind of testing it anyway. Uh, but in the days since uh, brave and then uh, last night, I think Vivaldi both came out and said, yeah, we're not doing this. And I have to say um, the brave and Vivaldi blog posts are both worth reading as great descriptions of the lie that is flock. If you're interested in this topic, um, Get a flock blocker. <laughs> flock blocker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds vaguely scatological. Um, Mary Jo, do you know, I, I, this came up on Twitter and I didn't quite catch yeah. the answer. What was the, is there an official Microsoft stance on flock yet? I haven't know? seen one. If there yeah, because okay. if they don't do so anything, the question was, it'll come into, it'll get an edge eventually. Right. right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. Uh, I'll just say that any of those extensions I mentioned will work with Edge and will block Flock. So the question is whether Microsoft will build it natively into Edge or not. I, mm -hmm. I As of today, I don't think we know. I, there was a discussion about this on Twitter. I, I, I felt like it was mm -hmm. answered somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Right now, you have to have you know Chrome, I think, 86, and it's only a small percentage of the total Chrome users who are getting the Flock. Yeah. Um, but EFF has launched a um, tool... EFF.org mm -hmm. called Am I Flocked? <laughs> just, the puns just keep on coming. Uh, and uh, you can run it and it'll tell you if you're if you have you're in a flock and what your it'll even tell you what your cohort is, which is kind of cool. <laughs> I kind of want to know, right? I'm almost yeah. tempted yeah. to use Chrome for a while just so I can find you know, get in a cohort. Oh, you're uh, old white men. Thanks. Cool. Uh, yeah, thanks. Who drink <laughs> peanut yeah, butter whiskey? Say. And I, I see it right. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's like whiskey, uh, '67 Mustang, yeah. and action movies starring '80s. Action there movies. you go. And you wear your baseball uh, cap backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep. uh, A lot so. of man spreading over there. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I, Flock is uh, Flock is a, a, a tradition now. I'd say at Google, where they announce something like it's some benefit, like. We're going to uh, put ad blocking in, in Chrome, and we're going to now we're going to block trackers in Chrome. Right. Like I'm like, you guys are the best. They don't do any of that stuff. Well, it's, it's their it's, business is selling ads. 
Yeah. I mean, again, maybe be honest about it. I mean, they're trying to find some kind of a, well, a balance. And that's the explanation things, of, of flock is that, uh, you're not uniquely identified. We're going to put you in a cohort. Yeah. And, right. and when, a any, this is the thing I don't like when any site asks, it will say what cohort you're in. Uh, yep. the cohorts will change fairly regularly depending on how you browse but as EFF points out, that's just that's just helping browser fingerprinting because, you know, that's right. that's one data point that reduces the set of possible. Plus, what, to, what are these cohorts? Like, my cohort is like uh, middle-aged white males who live on the street I live on in the town I live in yeah. using the browser yeah, I with use. A, with the last name that begins with T. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, but, um, but we don't know who it is. Um, so <laughs> I don't think it'll be de-anonymized de in that respect, but it's just, it's more data. It's a lot more data for a fingerprinting tool and everybody's right, running fingerprinting right. tools. I think, I, okay, I talk me down. I'm starting to okay. think, why fight this? Ah, uh, jeez. Well, listen, uh, the Matrix called and they appreciate your support. <laughs> but um, I, <laughs> why fight this? I yeah. mean, uh, why not fight this? I mean, I, I because- the, the problem with the privacy violation stuff is that it could lead to identi identity theft, right? I think that's the end game. I think, you know, on one level, there is the just what Google is doing with advertisers. But I, I think any any chance that data about you is being transmitted around the web, I think is dangerous. Yeah, I, I just yeah. don't. There's no reason not to block this. I mean, well, I, it's, it's a little know, it's more like, work. It's, it's like. Uh, well, and it potentially is going to give you. I mean, here's the downside. You're going to get ads yeah. for stuff you don't care about. I know. Okay. But you're probably blocking ads too, if you're doing this. So like I, I, when you are using uh, Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge or presumably these other Chromium based browsers, right? You, you one time install some kind of extension. It's an true. ad blocker. A I mean, I run whatever you block origin and you're yeah. right. That's I'm sure. And then every time you install that, that browser from then on, yeah. it's installed yeah. automatically. You don't have to do anything. It's not as fun. if ad recommendation engines worked at all. Well, that's the thing. Like it's, the, what a, what a weird thing to go to a, a consumer with. It's like, well, I mean, you could get anonymous <laughs> ads, but don't you want to get ads you want to read? Well, yeah, um, if I'm no, going to read ads, I, I guess I'd prefer <laughs> something I'm interested in. Yeah. I no, guess. I, I guess. I've only seen one instance of an app anywhere in the world where they displayed ads that I actually kind of no, liked. And that I was know. Instagram. And that's it. I, I don't know well, why. For Instagram's too that. damn good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> something, I mean, that's my problem with Instagram. Oh, is I, 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 I buy stuff a, all the time on it. Yeah. Oh my God! Well, I, I don't anymore. I've, I've spent I spent hours browsing for wallets. Yes, you know for <laughs> wallets. I mean, like it's I wallets. It's weird. Like, do you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I know. Yep. Oh no! I I I find the ads on Instagram to be. I am wearing Bensley underwear right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Featured okay. on Instagram. You know, there I mean, that's that's the problem. And uh, I, I, look, we live on amazing. ads. This is an ad-supported network. Uh, right, right. Of course, they don't. We don't have to track. We can't track you, but we don't have to track you because. Yeah. They figure, well, if you're listening to Windows Weekly, you're obviously a Windows nut. Uh, yeah. So that's enough. For And you right. notice most it of our advertisers be, fit right yeah, into that. It should that, be relevant you know? to some degree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Much more relevant than ad recommendation engines deliver. Well, I mean, I, it, listen, if you've listened to any podcast, you can go back in time to any, like, you know, September 2017. And everyone was running the exact same ad for the exact, whatever right. it was. Like, Audible ads were a thing for a long time. And then yeah. you know, Everybody Squarespace, Squarespace was a thing Audible. for a long yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. Now um, it's much know. more customized. I agree. Yeah. And actually, I gave the argument, <laughs> the answer to my own question, because mm -hmm. if I stopped using Instagram because the ads were too effective. Right. <laughs> right. That's why you don't want ads. In a nutshell. You, yeah. Right? right. They know so much about you and they're not. It's all first party. They're not leaving Instagram to get that information. It's all first party. And that's why it's so good. <laughs> and every 10th picture on Instagram is something I've got to buy. That's the problem. Right. <laughs> In a nutshell. Yeah. Hmm. Um, app pick of the week, sir. So Parallels Desktop, everybody knows, is a product on the Mac that lets you run Windows or Linux uh, in a virtual machine. And if up to date, it's been kind of an incredible product because it does this integration into the OS where you could just run the applications. Like the virtual machine's running under the covers, but you're looking at the Mac operating system and you bring up I don't know, Word for Windows, which is a terrible example because that's on the Mac, but some Windows application. And it's literally a Windows app. Like Mary Jo could run Notepad on the Mac and that would make running a Mac okay, probably, right, Mary Jo? No. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it looks 
<laughs> it's kind of cool. Like that, that kind of stuff is nice. Um, but as Apple moves to the M1 or the Apple Silicon uh, hardware, um, it's hard, it gets harder to virtualize x86 in that way. And Parallels desktop for the Mac does not support x86 or x64, whatever virtualization on M1 yet. Um, the latest version 16 probably shipped last fall. 16.5 just came out today. This is where they officially support virtualization on M1 base Max. And, you know, as we often see on M1, uh, lots of performance improvements, um, lots of energy uh, consumption improvements, and that kind of thing. However, the problem is you don't get, you do get that OS integration stuff with Windows. So in other words, a Windows app just running on the Mac without which is nice. having to look, look at it, which is really nice. Yeah, the coherence mode. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, really nice. But the problem is it has to be Windows 10 on ARM. And there is no such thing as a version of Windows 10 on ARM you can down, you know, buy and download well, it that's, yourself. So you have to get... Well, was my problem. When I used this in beta, yeah. hardly anything worked. Windows right. worked, right. but nothing else worked. I, could get, I got Windows 10 on ARM beta from Microsoft... Right. And that's what you still have to do. And by the way, that's not supported. And because it's a Windows Insider build, you have to keep it up to date or it will expire, um, which isn't, you know, look, if you want to do this, that's not an onerous thing, but you do still have to work on that. Um, the problem is, as of today, um, virtualization on M1 requires an ARM-based operating system, whether it's Linux or Windows. And uh, there are various, as you know, uh, ARM-based versions of Linux. That's probably not as big of a problem, but Windows 10 on ARM is has its own compatibility <laughs> issues, frankly. I mean, this is another part of the problem. You know, one of the apps, if you think about the types of apps that would be on Windows but not on the Mac, but you really need it on the Mac, um, a lot of those things might not actually run on Windows 10 on ARM either. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not Parallel's fault. And I assume, and I, I have a vague memory that they are working on this, but I assume in the future you will be able to virtualize x86. That'll be an interesting day. Uh, but that's not possible today, unfortunately. I got a pick of the week for you, Paul, since you asked me about mm -hmm. Linux. And this actually I just got uh, from Keith512, who's really a great chatter. He's a real techie guy, a Linux guy. Mm -hmm. There's a, a site, shells.com, okay. which allows you to run uh, a virtualized, uh, containerized version of your favorite operating system. And they have a yeah. Manjaro desktop. So if you wanted to try... Uh, oh, there's a variety of uh, virtual yeah. machines. If you wanted to try it, um, you could, okay. you could do that. that. Shells.com, you. your personal cloud computer. I think this is the future of, of desktop uh, computing in so many places. I really do. Yeah, and especially for that compatibility hurdle where you, maybe you're running an iPad or a phone. or That's you know, exactly the, or, on the front whatever. page of Shells, yeah. that's exactly the use yeah. case. Your yep. desktop on your iPad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because a lot of time, you know, people want to make these shifts to more modern platforms or whatever, but then they get there and like, well, I need this one thing, you know, or yeah. business especially. It's like we're not going to let you use this unless it runs this, this, or this. And uh, isn't yeah, Windows Virtual might... Desktop supposed to come out this year? When is when is that going to be? Guys, you're giving me like the perfect segue into the enterprise. Yep. Pick. It's time <laughs> for the enterprise pick of the week. Mary Chewing Joe it up, Foley. <laughs> I'm really I did set her up. Didn't you I? really just teed that right up. <laughs> Yeah, Windows Virtual Desktop. We're talking about virtual desktops and Windows. Here you are. The service that already exists, Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, my pick is a feature of WVD that Microsoft talked up way back in 2018 and did not deliver until yesterday. Um, that <laughs> feature is called MSIX App Attach. Um, so MSIX is a packaging format for Windows. That's, that's my very simplified way of explaining it. Um, MS, MSIX App Attach, if you're using it, um, will enable users to be able to skip over maintaining multiple master images for different apps and to package all their virtual apps into a single image if they want. So basically, MSIX App Attach is going to make WVD way better performance wise, and it's going to make it way better in terms of how you manage your apps for your users. So I, I remember back at 2018 at Build, they really were saying this was the thing that was going to make WVD amazing. And then it kind of 
went into pre- private preview and then preview. And I'm like, I wonder if they're ever going to come out with it. it because not all that many people have actually packaged their apps as M- MSIX apps. So I thought maybe they gave up on it, but no, it came out yesterday um, as generally available. So they've got documentation on it now and they are making it available for people to download and to get through Azure. So yeah, if you're a WVD user, you might want to kick the tires on this if you are not already through a private preview program. Very cool. I didn't realize virtual desktop was already uh, available. Yeah. Yep. Is it most, it's mostly thing, enterprise, right? I mean. Yeah. The thing yeah. you're thinking about is cloud PC, which is right. built on top of right. windows. That's virtual what desktop. I was thinking of. And when's yep. that going to be? This year. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that will hit this year. <laughs> I think yep. that one will come this year based on various things I've heard. <laughs> yeah. I think that's coming. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think a code name is in order right about now. Yeah. And since we were talking about the cute little webcam that Microsoft introduced yeah. this week, why not go back to the to the books and look how far back Brad Sams had the code name on this? 2019. The code wow. name was Barry, B A R I. It also was code named Aruba. No, not but that it, Barry. But it is kind of like that, though, isn't it? Really? <laughs> hey, Barry. Barry, you're up. No, Barry? I think Barry in this case has to do with a location in Italy, perhaps. Um, the code name for the camera also, uh, yeah, the webcam also oh, So maybe also it's Bari, not Barry. Like oh, yeah, Bari. Sure. Bari. Probably, it's probably Bari. Bari. Yep. Yeah, I bet you're right. Um, so, yeah, it. <laughs> We, we knew that they were thinking about this. And then they remember when they showed the webcam on the Surface Hub 2 oh, and we were yeah. like, oh, there it is. But then they never sold that as a standalone webcam. So I'm like, oh, maybe that's not Barry. Actually, Bobby. that one looks like an Apple <laughs> EyeSight camera. So I don't think that's, it's not Barry. No, <laughs> it doesn't no, have the convenient, the it's not it doesn't have the so convenient that, forehead That's rest. a USB-C, it, it <laughs> literally mounts into a USB-C yeah. part of the top of the surface. Oh, that's yeah. cool. It just plugs right in. Yep. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yep. So, you know, there, there may have been other code names between when Bari and Aruba were the code names for this and now because it's been so long. But originally, the OG code name for the webcam, I would say, is Bari. I would say that. Bari. The OG Bari. And exactly. now, <laughs> and you, you'd filled this in at the last minute because mine did not have oh. this. So, guys, well, all during the show, I was having a horrible time with OneNote. <laughs> oh. <laughs> OneNote, one like, went say, offline. Oh. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> I, I was thinking, Mary Jo obviously waits until I do the Xbox thing. And then she's no. like, now I'm going to do the pick. Yeah. No, I was thinking, I don't think I'm able to get back into the into the notes because OneNote for the web went down hard. I don't know what happened there, but it was down. <laughs> oh. But it's up. Okay. Yeah. Just in time for the beer pick of the week. Yay. And what is it? Um, the beer pick is something from our only Manhattan brewery um, called Torch and Crown. And the beer pick is called Bat Flip. <laughs> Bat Flip has, is a Bat baseball reference. <laughs> yeah, if you're not a baseball fan, you might think this has to do with uh, flying <laughs> rodents, Bats. but it's not. No. 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 Disappointing, by the way, but that's okay. It's what yeah. you do after uh, you hit a home run that you don't even have to yeah. run for. Is or it also if you get struck out. If you're struck out and not happy about it. Yeah. So it could be either yeah. one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and the can for this is cool. It's got a bunch of people flipping their bats. Oh, that's um, cool. That's <laughs> so cool. I love Yeah, that. so Torch and Crown brews this beer in the spring to commemorate the beginning of baseball season. Oh. And so they call it... A spring ale. It's actually an IPA technically, but um, it's not very hoppy. Paul would, I think Paul would actually drink this beer if he were still drinking beers. Um, very citrusy, very easy to drink. 5.4%, not a big giant hop looks bomb. Good. Just a nice summer beer yeah. that you would drink while you're flipping your bat or watching people flip bats. <laughs> I do like the- I like uh, that you're commemorating baseball. I do like the- uh, <laughs> That's great. The bat flip. Those bat guys yeah, on the cute. can look like uh, golfers, though. <laughs> I think so. I think it has to do like I re, when I first read about this, something to do with Korean baseball um, oh, somehow. Okay. Huh. <laughs> I, but I couldn't find that reference anywhere. I'm like, OK, um, yeah, it is a little weird. 
but they're cute. <laughs> it's cute. I think, nice. you get in, I think you can get thrown out for flipping your bat. You can probably have can to. You? Well, if, especially if you flip it in the wrong direction. You know, you don't oh, want yeah, to right. flip it toward the audience or the ump. Or, yeah, anybody. yeah, it's yeah. Player dangerous to throw the bat yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that was a very nice beer, and I wish I had it right now, but unfortunately, <laughs> I am uh, I am here to do this week in Google in a little bit. But you guys can go out and have a beer because Windows Weekly has come to a close. We do Windows Weekly. Of a Wednesday morning, my time, afternoon, your time, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's 1800 UTC. I say the, the, the start time only so you can tune in to our live stream if you want, uh, twit.tv slash live. Uh, there's a chat room going at the same time, so you can chat along with other listeners at irc.twit.tv. TV after the fact on demand versions available at twit.tv slash ww. If you go to that page, you'll also see a link to our YouTube channel, all Windows Weekly, all the time. You can subscribe there or pick a podcast client. There's a bunch there, whatever your favorite is, and subscribe in that, and that way you'll get it automatically the minute it's available of a Tuesday or sorry, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, and if you do uh, have a podcast client that allows you to review, please leave a five-star review for us. We'd really appreciate that. You'll find Paul Therat at therat.com. That's his website. Become a premium member and you'll get the good stuff. Actually, there's good stuff everywhere, but the really good, you know what I mean. The really good stuff. Uh, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. Uh, his book, The uh, Windows 10 Field Guide, is available at leanpub.com. Mary Jo Foley. Uh, is at ZDNet. Her ZDNet blog is all about Microsoft.com. And that concludes. That's the way it is. That's the way it is <laughs> for Wednesday, April 14th, 2021. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Have a wonderful uh, week. Uh, and I will see you next week on Windows Weekly. Bye bye. And yeah, good luck nice. tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. see. Don't feel yeah. too terrible. Yeah, yeah. You might I not. feel I feel fine now. I feel like, yeah. of course, I did take four Advils, and I feel like it, you know how sometimes when you take Advils in the back of your head. There's something that would be a headache if you hadn't. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I have that. Yeah. So I'm thinking. <laughs> Definitely, head, headache was a component. That's, yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And my arms. I just every sore. time I drank water, though, I drank a ton of it, and I felt way better. Thank so. you. That's just word to the wise. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think the big impact, if, if there is one, is probably going to be sometime tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fine. I'm prepared. Yeah. Good. I'm prepared. Oh, the Titanic sank yeah. uh, on this day in 1912. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> wow. I was When I was a kid, I was a big Titanic. I read all the books. Oh, of course. Loved yeah. it. Fascinating. Haven't it. seen it, by the way. SNL had an amazing skit about the uh, iceberg on uh, the new segment, which is priceless. <laughs> this week? Absolutely. Or it's an old one? Yeah. yeah. Last, oh. No, last weekend. It was oh, awesome. Oh, good. It's oh, awesome. good. <laughs> they commemorated the... Uh, the uh, he tells his side of the story. You know, he's the like, iceberg. they hit me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's they like, hit me. I was just like, sitting there. Mind like, my own business. Did they, did they die from ice or water? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's was it? Really I didn't good. kill anybody. That's really <laughs> you gotta, good. You got to watch. It's 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 amazing. The, whoever the, I don't even know who the person is. He's amazing. It's oh, it's I'm going to really watch good. it. That's hysterical. Yeah, it's excellent. Mm. Um, all right. Uh, I should mention that there's a big announcement coming up on Sunday, and uh, we will fill you in. Before I think we had a ca a conference call with a host scheduled for Friday, but we've we moved it. So mm -hmm. yeah. I think you will hear from us. But I think you probably, nothing bad, only good. <laughs> but, but thank you for the scary yeah. email, by the way. Um, I know. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> no, no. So Lisa okay. said the first one out. I said, Lisa, everybody's going to think we're being sold. Yeah. So then she sent a second one out, which further confused everybody. It did. <laughs> so uh, I apologize for that. No, no. It's you okay. can probably at this point guess what it is. But um, anyway. I literally cannot. Really? Good. But I am. Good. Somewhat of an idiot, so I don't know. No, <laughs> I don't know. It's all good. Okay. It's all okay. good. Thank you, guys. Thank and you uh, we'll talk next week. All right. Bye. 
Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you are interested in checking out all things smart home and Internet of Things, then you should check out Smart Tech Today, the podcast I, Micah Sargent, do with my co-host Matthew Casanelli. It's all about the smart home and improving your automations. 